The American Dragon, Brian Danielson, was on the Sessions podcast with Renee Paquette this week. Brian and Paquette go way back, all the way back to uh, their days co-hosting Talking Smack together over on WWE. And uh, obviously the biggest highlight, I don't think I did cover this one, but the biggest highlight of the entire show, one that will be remembered for years to come, was the infamous edition of Talking Smack where The Miz confronted Brian Danielson and called him a coward to his face. And uh, this got ugly really quick and got heated really quick. And uh, according to Brian Danielson, he was this close to hitting The Miz. Check out this clip. We don't need to like harp on this, but what is like your recollection of that show in that moment when that was all going down with you and Mike? Miz was very frustrated. He was intercontinental champion and wasn't being on TV much. I was very frustrated that they weren't clearing me to wrestle despite numerous doctors having cleared me to wrestle. And, and you know, I understand why, but that's a long story anyway. So just oh, getting we'll get to the to point of, of my frustration. So we came up with this thing and the original plan that Mike and I had come up with was I was going to fucking deck him. We wanted to get under each other's skin so much that it was plausible that I would legit be angry enough to punch him. And so that was the intent. And the idea was either they're going to fire me or it's going to make people want to see the match so much yeah. that they're going to have to clear me to wrestle. But then Mike did such a great job. Intuitively, I felt it was better to walk off. Interesting. And, like, and, and leave him, because it was also like, God, this is so good. Leave him with his heat. That was one of the greatest moments. Not just, uh, that was definitely the best moment in talking smack history. Um, but this could be one of the top, I don't know, not 10, but at least 20, 25 moments in WWE history in the last 10 years. I'll give you, I'll bet you anything because people still remember to this day and it wasn't even on TV. It was on their fucking, it was on YouTube, right? Um, or maybe they, I don't remember on the network. Was it on the network? I don't fucking know, but talking smack, it wasn't even like something that was seen by the, the worldwide audience. You know, it was a smaller viewership, but everybody talks about this episode where the Miz and Brian Danielson got into it. Uh, you know, and it was Danielson accusing the Miz of playing it safe and, you know, uh, not really being a real wrestler because he, he goes out there and he just, you know, uh, paints by numbers, so to speak. And I'm not repeating his words, but kind of just generalizing, uh, you know, what he had to say to the Miz. You know, he was kind of criticizing that Miz is a play it safe wrestler and almost kind of just plays wrestler, you know. Miz took that to heart because Miz has worked very, very hard. And uh, he takes pride in actually being a guy that has stayed safe and rather injury-free for his almost his entire career. And Miz has took a lot of shit throughout his entire career. He's still, to this day, there are people that think of him as the real world guy. To this day. He was on Real World for like three years. He's been in WWE for over 10, right? But still, to this day, he gets no respect like Rodney Dangerfield. Um, Miz has my respect, but he certainly isn't like a wrestler's wrestler. He is the epitome of a sports entertainer, and he's done it at the highest level for a great many of years. He has main evented WrestleMania. He has been a WWE champion, as much as many of you would like to have forgotten that. And uh, I feel like he's earned every bit of it. He's not a wrestler's wrestler. He's not the best wrestler ever. But he works hard as the WWE guy. He does all the media stuff. He's, all, he's, he's there for whatever they need him to do. He's always ready. He's always in shape. He's never injured. He, um, you know, he's an ideal candidate for a company like a WWE. The reality show, you know, he does it all. Uh, Brian Danielson is a wrestler's wrestler. 
He is the, you know, when you think of like a wrestler, you think of Brian Danielson, you know. Um, there are, I guess there are some people that will look at his WWE career and then the yes, 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 and see sports entertainer, but Danielson and Ring of Honor and certainly back again now in AEW, he just beats the shit out of people and he gets in fights and, and really gritty wrestling matches every time he wrestles and he's to me uh i do think he's he's you know he's the greatest wrestler in the world right now he's what bret hart was back in the 90s to me you know bret hart was the first time i ever recognized work right you know it was, it was always just entertainment and colorful characters and loud noises and big moves and stuff up until uh, I reached a certain age and watched Bret Hart in the ring and his technical masterpiece. Uh, you know, every, everything he did was so crisp and so, uh, it just looked so like it was snug, but it was clean. I don't know. But Brian Danielson to this day, every time I watch him work, you know, it's like the epitome of what a wrestling move, you know, all of his moves are executed perfectly you know he's, he's very technical very smooth in the way that he's able to do everything um and he was at a point on talking smack where he was pissed off because he wanted to wrestle he's been cleared by many many doctors but he wasn't cleared by wwe's doctors and uh he was pissed about that had a chip on his shoulder and he was actually looking to get fired and he, the plan was to punch the Miz in the face. You know, they had talked about this going into it. Uh, they didn't like plan it out blow for blow, but they kind of planned to get into an altercation that ended in Danielson hitting the Miz to where they would need to either fire him or force him to uh, force themselves into a position where they had to book the match between the Miz and Danielson. We never got that, and that's fucking depressing, to say the least, because they really built that up, and he was ready to get fired, but he felt in that moment that it just didn't feel right. You know, the plan was to, Miz was trying to make Danielson hit him. He was waiting for it, and it never came because Danielson thought that it had a more of effect on the Miz if he could keep his heat. So there were very real words being thrown around in that very real emotions very real thoughts and it felt like it was getting so close to a real fight a real fist fight i've never seen the miz look that angry i've never seen danielson look that angry you know both men were you know they were intense that was an intense moment poor renee was sitting there just scared because she didn't know what was going on and didn't know how to react or what to do about it I uh, made for great TV, and it's one of the most memorable moments in the modern era of professional wrestling. Certainly, uh, I, I I just don't think anybody can argue that. You know, that's something that'll I think ten years from now will still be remembered as as a moment. And uh, it you know all's well that ends well. I guess Danielson's back wrestling now. The Miz is still on top of his game, working with huge celebrities. And, uh, you know, both men, it worked out. But I really would have loved to see that match. Um, but certainly, if you have not seen that segment from Talking Smack, it should be on YouTube. And uh, I'll try to link it down in the description if you're watching the clip or on one of the end cards here or something like that. But enough of that. On to the next. Oh, yeah. Thanks for checking out the video. Yeah. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like it if you liked it. Yeah. And you can check out full episodes each and every Sunday right here on the channel. Ooh, yeah. Dig it.